where things stand with Las Vegas Sands and taking over the real estate there. Yeah, so we announced the acquisition uh, on Wednesday of last week, um, but we will not close on the acquisition um, until a number of processes uh, go through their full cycle, most uh, importantly of which is the regulatory process that Apollo must go through as the new operator. And so we're expecting this to close sometime in the back half of 2021. Is this all de rigueur now that you you guys know how the system goes in terms of regulators and how to navigate the the special kinds of permissions that you need when you're endeavoring to get into the gaming industry, or does that not affect you at all? No, it does affect us. It doesn't actually affect us, ironically enough, in Las Vegas. The regulatory regime for the real estate owner in Las Vegas is actually quite light. But in many of the other states where we own assets, we actually have to go through the full licensing process that an operator would, um, or at the very least, go through what's called a supplier licensing process. And Contessa, you've never had your affairs turned upside down like you have when you go through a gaming regulatory process. When they ask you for your check register from five years ago, you go, wait, do I even have a check register? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And now you're about to be basically the owner of the nation's largest resort hotel. What does that say about your confidence in the recovery of the Las Vegas economy? It it says that we are extremely confident about the recovery of the Las Vegas economy. You're already starting to see signs of life. Um, Our largest tenant, Caesars, you heard its CEO, Tom Reed, talk in his earnings call a little, almost two weeks ago, Contessa, about the very positive signs we're seeing around booking. And frankly, the positive signs you were already seeing um, over the last, well, I guess it would be probably eight or nine months since Vegas reopened in July. You know, there have been periods over the weekends here where Caesars, again, our largest tenant, has been running 90% plus occupancy in Las Vegas. And to put that number into context, Caesars has nearly 24,000 hotel rooms in Las Vegas. So when they run 90% plus occupancy, they've sold 20,000 room nights. There's very few other leisure destinations in the world where anyone's achieving anywhere near that kind of level of visitation. And that's, again, under what has been a more restrictive COVID regime. Vegas is beginning to reopen, uh, as are many other destinations, and the forward booking pattern has turned very positive. You know, Ed, it's interesting because at the start of the pandemic, there was some skepticism about how the REITs would fare, whether you would have tenants defaulting on rent payments because of what was happening with closures and the like. That really hasn't happened. I mean, the the gaming REITs as a group have fared fairly well. Can you give me specifics about Vici and how investors should think of you? Are you the safe gaming bet? Yeah, so uh, Contessa, you're you know you're 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 bringing back <laughs> you're bringing back memories of a year ago this week. A year ago this week, the first conference that we would have gone to in what we're now realizing was kind of the COVID period got canceled, and it was really next week a year ago that things really got dark. And certainly, we were concerned as all of our assets closed, and there is no doubt about it. All of our assets by early April were closed in every single jurisdiction where we own assets. But what was remarkable was the degree of strength our tenants came into this crisis with, and the degree of strength our tenants showed in figuring out how to get reopened, how to get reopened safely for their associates and their guests, and how strongly they benefited from a consumer rebound. It was really by June or July that especially our regional assets were seeing levels of visitation that were very strong, uh, levels of revenue that were recovering strongly, but most importantly, Contessa, levels of profitability that in some cases exceeded same period prior year because of the margin improvements our operators were able to make. What that all netted out to for Beachy is that we collected 100% of our rent in cash, on time, throughout 2020. Few other American REITs did that. Uh, the gaming REITs generally did very well, but Vici collecting only third-party rent because we, we're not controlled by anybody else outside of ourselves. Uh, we collect 100% of our rent in cash and we feel it's a really strong validation of our business model. You know, it's interesting to see you as a gaming REIT start to venture out into other areas, golf courses. I know that there's a 
a financial partnership with Chelsea Piers, this big sports facility in Manhattan. Is this the, the future growth opportunities for you in owning travel and leisure properties? I mean, are you going to buy ski mountains? Um, we'll see about ski mountains, but um, you are right. We've begun to diversify outside of gaming. But I, I think, Contessa, if you'll give me just a moment, I'd like to concentrate on what we announced our acquisition of last week. When we announced our acquisition of the Venetian, we announced our intention to acquire 8 million built square feet. A little more than 5% of that square footage is gaming, right? So it's like Boston Properties being told, oh, you're in the street retail business at the GM building because of the Apple store. Well, yeah, they have a very valuable Apple store, but there is a rather valuable office tower associated with it. Two million of the square feet that we bought are convention space, the largest assemblage of privately owned convention space in America. And the most important customers of the Venetian are America's largest corporations who send tens, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of conventioneers to that asset every, every year. And so we're already diversifying simply by owning what are called gaming assets because they are so diverse in the experiences they offer. And that's without, again, giving credit to the MSG sphere, which is being built as we speak on our land or what will be our land at, Las, at uh, the Venetian. And it's gonna be the signature 21st century arena.